Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Latvia once again and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel once before. So for this review, we will go to Yelgava, which is to the southwest of Riga, the capital city, and we're going to have a look at another beer from Hopala. So this particular beer is called Nebula. It comes in at 8.5% ABV and this one is a New England hazy, whatever you want to call it double imperial whatever you want to call it ipa so um yeah very very curious to see how this one turns out the last beer that we had from this brewery was abstract and that was a regular new england ipa so i'm curious to see how something a little bit stronger turns out because i was impressed with that last one so um yeah fingers crossed this is another good beer and i hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one so uh yeah let's go for it so big thank you again to remance from the brewery for sending me these beers, they ended up sending me a big box of things, but we ended up with about 14 different uh, beers actually. So you'll see me review quite a few beers from this brewery over the next little while. So keep an eye out for those. And if you do have any other Latvian brewery recommendations, do let me know about those in the comment section below. But uh, anyway, as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Hopala before. And like I said, you will see some more added to that that list in the near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the latvian beers that i'm reviewing for you and that's being added to quite a lot at the moment because of all these hop of the beers that we have but as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Hopala then, on to my brewery notes. So Hopala are based in Yelgava, Zemgala region to the southwest of Riga, the capital city in Latvia, and the brewery is owned by three friends. This is Remans Pavziniuks, Kristaps Stankus and Einars Rumjansevs. So Einars is a teacher by trade, Kristaps has a background in finance, while Remans owns his own marketing firm. So they come from quite a diverse background, uh, which is quite common in a lot of breweries actually. But they apparently discovered craft beer after hearing that a neighbour was brewing something called an IPA, which they had never heard of. They went and tried this and they were just like, you know, damn, this is what beer can actually be. But after this, they started home brewing together in about 2013 under the name Kaliu Alus, which translates into English as blacksmith brewery. But they gradually scaled up their home brewing over time and moved around. They were brewing in the countryside, then in the kitchen and then in the garage apparently. And they got a lot of positive feedback on their beers and they were encouraged by many to turn professional and start their own brewery so that's what they did in 2019 they officially registered the name fermentum which acts as a parent company and the beer is released under this brand name hopala and the idea behind uh, using this rather than kaleo alice which they used previously was that they uh, that this was an easier name for people from foreign countries to remember because Latvian of course is a very very difficult language and if you don't grow up with that there's little chance that you're going to learn it to be honest with you but um, yeah they went with this name because uh, they just thought it worked. But under Kaleo Alice they had released a few different English style beers like some stouts and uh, porters and bitters and things like this. But at the brewery these days, Einars is the head brewer, while Chris Stapps takes care of the finance side of things and looks after the yeast and also takes care of many technical problems, whereas Remans is dealing with the marketing and sales side of things with the brewery. But the brewery itself is equipped with a 1000 litre brew kit and they've been progressively expanding the fermentation capacity of the brewery over the last few years, but they wish to experiment with lots of different styles of beer and they collaborate with other local small businesses to get adjuncts to put in their stir in their uh, their stouts and sours and things like this as well. But a number of gypsy brewers also brew their beers at the Hopala Brewery too. But as of April 2021, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 60 different kinds of beer under the Hopala name, and they haven't produced anything under the name Kaliu Alice for um, a couple of years now. I think it was 2019 that they last released beers. 
under the uh, Kali you name. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about uh, Hopa Luff at the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rape Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's crack on then and see how we get on with this. So as you can see, I had to use a little bottle cap again just so, because this is one of these shiny cans that annoys the camera. As I say, I wish, I, I wish breweries would use the satin ones, but you know, I'm probably very unique in complaining about this because I'm filming um, the beer reviews in a sense. I need to speak to the other beer tubers and ask them how they do this. But I always get issues with shiny cans, but um, yeah, the artwork on this one is very, very nice, actually. Very kind of, I like that sort of constellation theme. My background, of course, is as a chemist and an astrophysicist, so I do like the sort of constellation-y type theme that this um, that this beer has. But uh, yeah, it looks very, very nice, this one. There you can see in the middle of the can there is the Hopala. Uh, Hopala Brewery symbol there and it tells you a little bit on the back about this beer. I like this on the back how they always tell you exactly what's in it. So the malts in this one are Maris Otter, Wheat and Dextrose. The hops are Columbus Mosaic and Simcoe which we know quite well and then it's London Eel Yeast number three. So um, yeah this should be quite interesting. This one, uh, the last one that we had, Abstract had quite a few things in it that we haven't really encountered uh, before that the the was it epic juice yeast or something it was called um but yeah this one's got london eel 3 which we have had quite a few times maris otter malt should be quite interesting in this one but yeah the hop mix in this columbus is most likely the bittering hop big spicy elements to it then we've got mosaic and simcoe in there as well mosaic lovely kind of 14 percent tangerine orange and then simcoe um, about 12 percent sort of tropical fruit so um yeah i really like how this one is um i really like how this one goes together actually so um yeah it looks very very nice nicely presented so 440 milliliter can this one i'm not sure what this beer would cost because this one was of course given to me by the brewery to take a look at but let's get it out and we'll get on with the taste and then an 8.5 percent new england hazy whatever you want to call it ipa with columbus mosaic and simcoe which is a bit of an old school you know it is a kind of old school um blend if you like but let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste and then very curious to see what it has in store for us because the last one was very nice actually so i think that'll do for the moment to take a look at the things and i'm just checking this is lined up for my <laughs> for my ocd but um yeah i always like the cans to be lined up with the camera of course but yeah this looks pretty nice before the head disappears you can see that this one is poured with about a half finger of a frothy i would say perfect white colored head actually that's going to fade away though to be a very thin foamy layer and leave a nice ring around the edge of the glass but yeah about a half finger of a frothy perfect white head on this one one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there but i mean overall it looks pretty nice and in terms of color this one's got a lovely hmm, this one's got a lovely kind of bright um yellow color to it actually but it's got a little bit of a more ambery element to it as well i think on the camera when i'm looking at the camera this one looks like a lovely kind of bright straight up yellow like a mango juice but actually to me uh, with the naked eye it looks a little bit more like a sort of um, mixed tropical juice you know maybe a little bit of a pineapple and mango and pineapple juice or something like that actually just a little bit of a, of a more darker ambery kind of color to it but it certainly looks very nice I always like comparing new england ipas to different fruit juices because that's just what the uh, what their appearance reminds me of to be honest but um yeah nothing out of the ordinary with that remember the color of your beer depends on one the type of malts that you use and two the length of your wort boil the longer you boil the wort the more the sugars caramelize thus you get a darker color of beer but um the level of haze as well in these beers depends on the um the oats and wheat the wheat and oat contents in this one so this one is mainly a wheaty beer with a bit of dextrose in it so yeah it makes sense that this one is actually quite soupy and gloopy this is soupier soupier and gloopier than the last one that we had which makes sense because of the alcohol content but the malt side of things is also playing a role there as well look at that that's a big soupy gloopy thing of a double ipa so um yeah in terms of appearance nothing particularly surprising about this one so let's have a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this very curious as i say Ooh, <laughs> the hoppy side of this beer is very nice yeah um, it's got a lovely juiciness to it this one 
and it's just got a little bit it's got a little bit more sort of pungency to it than the last one had as well actually um so that's kind of interesting it's got a, the, the multi backbone in this one is a lot more kind of smooth in a sense uh and yeah it's a lot more kind of smooth and bready if you like um but then you've got a lovely kind of oily fruity character out of this one too which is um which is kind of interesting so yeah this one is quite a wee bit different from the from the the nebula of course it is a double ipa but you know in terms of where it lies on the spectrum it, you know these styles wouldn't be too different but let's try and break down the aroma properly for you and see how we go so um yeah so straight away with this beer you're going to notice that nice big smooth malty backbone in there the dextrose and the wheat are kind of coming together to give you this big sort of thick white bready element to this one it's almost got a little bit of a doughy character to it in a sense um so yeah you're getting quite a bit of that out of this beer for sure so big like that's it straight away big thick white doughy bready backbone so absolutely um yeah on top of that you can smell a little bit of the maris otter the malty base does have a wee bit of sweetness to it for sure so maris otter it gives you a teeny little bit of a sort of caramelly note but it gives you a lot of a kind of brown bready and kind of biscuity note as well but it's, it leans more towards the biscuit than anything else so you do get one or two little grainy elements out of the malt base in this beer definitely you get a little bit of that sort of bread crusty um kind of element to it. it's got a wee touch of a whole whole mealy kind of thing that comes out a bit later too but that doesn't really overpower the big thick doughy white bready thing that you're getting from the the wheat and the dextrose in this one definitely not but yeah you do get a wee bit of a sweetness out of this beer a wee touch of a sweet caramel and then some McVitie's digestive biscuit elements I don't know how good a reference that is for Latvians that will watch this review but yeah McVitie's digestive biscuits that's what this um this beer really reminds me of in terms of the the kind of sweetness that you get out of the malt base in fact but the malt base is, is quite straight shooting in this one I've noticed that and and I had a look at some of the other ones as well the malt bases in these beers tend to be fairly straight shooting and if you go down that route a lot of it's about you know how the beer is actually brewed and conditioned and things like that so it seems that these guys are maybe going down to a very straight shooting route but if this beer is as good as the last one then we'll know that they're they're doing something right but yeah that's the multi side of the beer straight shooting big thick white bread bit of bread crust some some brown sugary notes and a little bit of a biscuit element to it and it works very very well so um yeah on the hoppy side of things then let's have a little look at that um there's a wee touch of earthiness to it but that's quite minimal big green component though big bright floral aromaticity it's interesting because normally columbus would give you um a big spiciness i don't get so much of that out of this beer um and it says on the it does say on the can as well the ibus of this one is uh, 35 so it's a bit more um it is a bit more bitter than the last one but again columbus the, the thing with these hops is columbus is mo is not usually used as an aroma hop so what i'm guessing is columbus will be the early edition hop remember the early edition hop is the one that gives you the um the bitterness and you've got that trade-off over the period of the wort boil where you get um you know you've got that you've got that period that trade-off over the period of the wort boil where bitterness drops in favor of flavor and aroma so yeah this one for me the green component is quite bright in a sense rather than being sort of spicy as you'd normally get from um uh, columbus which is quite interesting definitely a good little bit of a grassy zesty character though on the front of the nose and that's another characteristic that you're going to get from uh, from columbus as well columbus does have a good bit of pungency to it and you can usually notice when columbus is in a beer definitely but um yeah on the fruity side of things it does come across as quite familiar i find that the mosaic is quite um is quite pungent in this beer you've got a really big kind of oily tangerine note out of this one you can smell that there's a good little bit of zest in there as well actually and um, maybe one or two little hints of a slight pineapple or something but then you also get the smooth juiciness of simcoe but you can feel it's um more kind of pungent edge as well simcoe is a very straight up passion fruity um hop for me it's got a kind of strong passion fruity note to it but if you put it in a new england ip like this it sort of juices up a little bit and gives you a very soft side of the passion fruit too so yeah passion fruit for me a little touch of pineapple and then a wee bit of a kind of well a big bit of a juicy tangerine orange coming out of this one so um yeah 
pardon me, the um, aroma of this beer is very, very nice and quite, again, straight shooting if you like. So yeah, I think it's about time that we have a taste of this beer. Take a bit of time to ponder over the aroma, as I always say, but uh, this I think is going to be quite nice once again. So this one is the Nebula Double IPA, New England Double IPA, coming in at 8.5% ABV from Hopa La Brewery in Yelgava, to the southwest of Riga over in Latvia. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skull, cheers, Prieka. Yeah, <laughs> again, that's pretty damn solid. The thing with these beers seems to be that they're very, very smooth, ridiculously smooth. It's interesting, definitely interesting. They've got a real kind of creamy edge to them almost, we could say. But yeah, that is very, very nice. Once again, yeah. So it seems that this brewery are taking a sort of very smooth and kind of creamy approach to their IPAs, like if you want a big bitey sort of New England IPA, from what we've had from these two, from the two that we've had so far, they haven't been so bitey. I mean, for me, you can take a New England IPA in a few, there we go, you can take a New England IPA in a few different directions. It can be, um, you know, it can be yeasty and farmhousey, it can be sort of um, grainy and rye leaning, it can be barley malt leaning and bready, oaty and creamy, wheaty and bitey, or it can be sort of brown sugary leaning, and quite often they'll display a little bit of a few of these different kind of the, these different areas if you like. But for me, this beer is a very, very thick and creamy sort of thing. And um, it's interesting, because if I was tasting this um, blind, I think, I would recognise the thickness and I'd say it maybe goes into the OT creamy category, but the dex, it's, you would have to realise that with this, it's the dextrose that's doing that. So this beer feels like it's quite heavy on the um, on the dextrose in a sense. So yeah, they're using the, de the dextrose in this one, I think, is the thing that's really smoothing, smoothening this out and making it almost just very, very creamy. I've got a triple IPA to try from these guys as well, which I have to say, I'm very, very curious about. So, um, yeah. But yeah, this is definitely one to check out if you like a big sort of thick and very smooth um, New England IPA. It doesn't quite have the bite that you'll get from some of the more wheaty leaning ones, but in fairness, you do get a bit more of the wheatiness coming out of the beer later on. That's my first impression of this one. It's a very thick and very smooth, almost creamy leaning. Um, New England IPA this one um, but again it's very nicely executed you know you have to say thumbs up to them for how this beer goes about its business um, but yeah let's try and break down the flavour of this one again and I would say that this this is quite a straight shooting beer it's just it's another one that's just crafted very well and there's so many New Englands on the market these days that that's really all you can ask for is you can ask for a well crafty beer you don't expect these beers to do anything like really crazy or whatever so in terms of the um in terms of the middle of your palate then again it's it's very straight shooting so um the middle of your palate there you can feel that nice sort of white bready backbone there it's got just develop a wee touch of a kind of greeniness there and you do get a little bit of that more airy white bready quality of it. So that blankets the middle of your tongue. On top of that you can feel a little bit of a thicker, um, you can feel a little touch of a kind of thicker, um, more doughy element as we say and I think that's the dextrose that's giving you that. You can feel that dextrose layer giving you that big thick almost like bagel like um, readiness there which is is quite interesting for sure. Um, so yeah, kind of more airy white bread underneath, bit of a thick sort of doughy bagely bread type layer to it and then you get the bit of Maris Otter sitting on the top. So in the dead centre of your palate you can feel there is a wee bit of a kind of 
brown sugary element there that will be partly due to the alcoholy flavors in this beer as well so you do get a bit of that concentrated brown sugar there but as you move further out from it, it you get a little touch of a werther's original butter candy type thing but then very quickly it becomes more kind of um biscuity as well it definitely becomes a little bit more biscuity rather than uh, rather than anything else so yeah all of the um yeah, all of the, the malty side of this beer it is very, very straight shooting in a lot of ways. So, um, yeah, it really, it works very, very nicely, actually. So, but yeah, big, big, creamy, smooth beast of a thing, this one in the malt base. So I'm curious to see how the triple IPA is going to work out in that regard, too, because it's probably going to be even thicker than this. Um, so, yeah. And the more that I drink of this too, as I say, the more it does develop a little bit of bite. Because when I first drank it, I thought, yeah, this beer is really nice, but it just needs a little bit of bite at the back of the palate. It does start to develop that a little bit. So maybe I had judged it a little bit too quickly. It goes to show you that's one of the benefits of doing these slightly longer re reviews, actually. You can let the beer open up a little bit. But yeah, I think that covers the middle third of the palette fairly well in this one. It's, it's quite layered, but in a lot of ways it's quite straight shooting as well. So border region between middle third and back third of your palette, again, you get a little bit of sort of doughy, bready build up and a little touch of graininess in there. Then on the back third of your palette, it's all about the wheatiness there. So you can feel that nice, more wheaty bitiness coming out of the beer. It's got, pardon me, a little touch of graininess to it as well. But um, yeah, that works. And sitting on top of that, of course, you get the more airy yeasty, yeasty flavours on top of the wheat so at the back of the palate the flavour is like this kind of high and it gradually can you know it sort of gradually condenses uh, gradually condenses down um, as you go it gradually condenses down as you go further forward um, into the to that border region um, and then as you you know um, as you go into the middle third of your palate you can feel it condenses down quite a lot and you can feel the, the flavours in the middle third of your palate are quite you know sort of squished together in a sense they're a little bit more condensed if you like but onto the hoppy side of things then you can really feel in the flavour that Columbus comes out in this one so back corners of the palate you do get a nice little bit of earthiness there and as you move further forward along the sides of the palate you've got a lovely big spicy floral aromaticity coming out of this beer and that's the Columbus that is Columbus's trademark it gives you that big big spicy element uh, but then around the front curve of the palate it's also got a nice little bit of a, a lighter grassy and slightly zesty sort of thing but that big slightly spicy floral element that you're getting out of this beer is the trademark of Columbus so um, yeah it goes together <coughs> pardon me um, very very nicely actually but uh, yeah, on the fruity side of things then, the, the front third of your palate, again, border region between front third and middle third of your palate, it gets a little bit sort of thicker. If you like, you do get a little bit of a kind of thick, more um, thick quality out of this one, a bit of a grainy element in there. Then the base of that front third of your palate is that sort of bagely, bready sort of thing from the, from the dextrose, I would think. It's soft underneath that. But then you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer in this one. So yeah. So yeah, sitting kind of uh, sitting underneath that, as you're sitting on top of that, I should say, sorry, with the fruity side of things. This one is kind of what you'd expect from both of these hops. We've had Simcoe and Mosaic combined together quite a lot. But yeah, at the back of that front third of your palate, you can get that strong, pungent, passion fruity element. That's the Simcoe that's going to give you that. As you move further forward, though, it does mellow out. It really mellows out quite nicely, but it still remains quite a pungent passion fruit that you're getting out of this one. And as you go into the front half of that front third of your tongue, you get the more oily, um, you get the more sort of oily um, tangerine, juicy orangey kind of um, element out of it. So yeah, I can really appreciate how that side of things goes together in this beer as well. So um, yeah, I like what this one has in store for us in terms I like what this one has in store for us in terms of the uh, in terms of the um, kind of fruity juicy side of things it's an you know Simcoe and Mosaic is a well-known combination so you've got a bit of the kind of more oily citrusy tangerine element and you've also got a little bit of the light the, the kind of 
kind of more pungent tropical element in there too. So yeah, I like how this um, goes together. It's a really interesting um, beer, this one. As I say, the thing that really makes this one unique is just the sort of smoothness and thickness of it in a sense. But yeah, and on that note, I think we should go on to the mouthfeel. So mouthfeel wise, this beer is pretty full bodied. It's one of the, it's definitely one of the thickest double IPAs I think I've come across in quite a wee while. Yeah, I would say that about it, definitely. It's one of the thickest and kind of more creamy feeling New England IPAs that I've had over the last little while, for sure. Um, and if the double IPA is, is this thick, I'm curious to see what the triple triple IPA has in store for us. We'll need to review that one next week at some stage. But yeah, if this is the double IPA, the triple IPA is going to be a bit of a beast, I would think. So... Um, yeah, <laughs> that's going to be quite fun. But yeah, big, thick... I'd say full bodied beer this one, smooth carbonation, the whole thing is just big and creamy and thick. Uh, in terms of IBUs, like we said earlier, this is 35 IBUs. I don't know if I would have quite got that from it to be honest. I think I might have, you know, I always tend to think, yeah, the, the, the New England doubles are a little bit more. I actually maybe would have thought this was about 40 or something, I would have guessed. But um, yeah, bitterness, remember, telling the IBUs is my weakest point of beer reviewing. But like we said, the malt base in this one is very big, thick and smooth. There is a wee touch of sweetness to it and you've got some nice oily, fruity characteristics. So um, yeah, I certainly like how this one, um, I certainly like how this one goes about its business, in fact. So uh, yeah, we can, I think we can leave it at that for this review then. It's got a lovely oily, fruity character to it, big, thick smooth creamy beer this one rather than anything else but um yeah let's leave it at that so this one was the nebula a new england hazy whatever you want to call it double imperial ipa coming in 8.5 percent abv from hopala brewery in uh, yelgaba near riga over in latvia really interesting one this i think i've enjoyed reviewing this beer for you here so um yeah let's leave it at that for this one once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from hopala brewery as well we will return to these guys quite soon i'm sure because i'm working my way through these ipas uh, and we've got some sour beers and stouts and things to look at that afterwards but um yeah this has been a very interesting one so i hope you guys have enjoyed it thank you for watching check out my social media let me know some other latvian breweries that i should check out i've seen um arpus and odu so far so let me know any uh, any other ones that i should check out beyond these three that we featured on the channel but uh, catch you guys very soon slanja skull cheers prika and do make sure you go and check out hopala brewery cheers